great. So today I'm going to review the Laird Omega Code Kelly with SimPad Plus, um, functionality of the mannequin, how to connect him, get him started, and kind of run, run him. So we're going to start with this connection here, which is the link box. This is his external battery pack. This battery will take uh, a charge to run for four hours. It takes about one hour to fully charge him. The AC power adapter that came with the mannequin, you got two. One that runs the battery will also run the link box in the event that the battery isn't working or it's not charged and you need to run a session, you can use that AC power for the link box, direct connect into the wall. That same power charges this will work with the SIM pad. The SIM pad does have an internal battery that can be charged, same concept, about an hour for a full charge, will run for about four hours on a full charge. You wanna make sure your SIM pad stays above 40% or so, 30 to 40%, because once it starts to get below that, uh, you may see some lags and in, in moving through the software, moving through the program, so just be aware of the charge on this, and I'll walk you through that in a minute of how, the, how to find how, how charged up it is. The external battery connects right here. So you would just plug this in when you come in to interact with the mannequin. Once the battery's plugged in, you're gonna hit the power button on the link box and it's gonna become green. And we're gonna let that kinda <clears throat> turn on for a second. It'll blink for a little bit and then you'll see two green buttons can let me know when you see those. It does take a minute or so to turn on from a, you know, once you connect the battery, great. We got two green buttons. So once I see those two green buttons, I'm gonna power on the SIM pad. You do not wanna have the SIM pad turned on until you see those two, two green buttons. Now I'm gonna power on the SIM pad. I would allow yourself before a session a good 10 minutes or so to get him up and running and started and just kind of walk through and make sure he's fully connected. So just allow yourself a little bit of time before you're gonna teach a class. The SIM pad will blink. This is very important. When you grab this SIM pad, you always wanna have this wrist in your hand. It's an adjustable wrist strap, so you can move the wrist strap up and down based on the size of your wrist. But I do recommend you keep this wrist on because that's gonna protect your SIM pad from falling um, in the event of any kind of like loose maneuvers. Okay, so now the SIM pad is turned on. Want, a couple things I'm gonna walk you through. At the top, it gives you your time, okay, your actual time of what time it is during the day. On the right-hand side here, you have your battery power. So here it says 95% with a picture of the simulator. So that means that that link box battery is charged to 95%. The next thing you're gonna see is where it says ad hoc. That is your actual connection between the link box and the SIM pad. So that's the, the, the power or the signal that the mannequin is, is projecting. On the right hand side, you're going to actually see the battery power of the SIM pad. We're at 68%, so we're good. That's where you really want to be aware of that like 30% mark. If you see it below 30, I recommend plugging it in. These tiles here are how you walk through the SIM pad, but for your use and how you're going to be running it, the, the tile that we're going to focus on is called manual mode. That's how you're going to engage with the mannequin and be able to run a session with your learners. I'm gonna hit manual mode, and then manual mode is gonna start. It's gonna take a second to start up. When you get into manual mode, the theme that you're gonna to wanna to run is called healthy, because that's gonna allow you to make all the parameter changes for the mannequin during your session. So we hit healthy. Here's where you have session information. So you could click on instructor and type your name in there if you wanna ca capture that. You could type in the name of the participants just simply by clicking on the line, it'll prompt the keyboard to pop up and you'll be able to get um, names typed in that way there just to keep track of who's taking the session. And our staff will do this for all of our students when they do it. Great. And if you have more than three, if you keep clicking add participant, it, there's really no limit to the amount of participants that you can add into a session, even if someone's just observing. Here we click OK. Now we're ready to launch the program. You want to hit start. That is going to actually start the program and make sure the mannequin is up and running and connected. A tip of trick that I do just to make sure we're working is I go here to the vocal sounds. You see this little icon that sounds like somebody's talking. I would click on that and maybe just hit cough. Coughing let you know that you're coughing. Since we're into the vocal sounds, I'll quickly walk you through how these work. These are pretty self-explanatory. These are your sounds. This is your volume setting. 
It defaults to five. I recommend bringing your volumes up on any of the sounds with the mannequin because learners sometimes have a hard time hearing it because obviously they're not probably used to using a simulator or whatnot. So if you go up to like eight, and if I hit shortness of breath, you're gonna hear that sound. Here's where you can hit repeat. If you wanna have it continuously, if you only wanna have it run for a short amount of time, you can click repeat or have repeat be off. Green means it's engaged. If I go back, if I go along these tiles here at the bottom, pretty straightforward, very intuitive and easy to use. If I click on the heart, here's all my all items related to circulation. Here's where you can go in and you can change your heart rhythm. It's just point and click. If I hit activate, that rhythm will activate. I can add extra systole. I can engage PEA, artifact. So you can really get involved in teaching cardiac uh, situations for the patients through the mannequin. So there's a lot you can do with, with this just by toggling through that heart sign. Yeah, here's where I can change the rate. I can toggle up and down and have the heart rate change the numbers. I can make him tachycardic. I can brady him down. Whatever you need to do for the scenario, you just wanna make sure you always hit that activate to have that reflect as a change. Back to the heart again. We can go through sounds. The mannequin does have pre-ported heart sounds. Again, think about that volume setting when you're going through that for your students to have to listen to those sounds. Here's where you can change your sound and you just wanna hit activate. Once I do that, it's gonna show you the sound. So you're gonna see what sound is going on with the mannequin. So I just added a friction rub. If I had a normal heart sound, that would show to me so I, as the, as the instructor, can see what the students are supposed to be identifying. <laughs> getting the skeleton in the background. Oh. <laughs> um, here's where you can go through and you can change your blood pressure so you can toggle that up and down. Um, I'll just, if you come over here, he does have the ability to have a blood pressure cuff. So anything blood pressure related, you'll be able to do that. And the students can auscultate the sound through the pulse and through the quarter cough set up here on the mannequin right here at this site. Um, pulse override. This shows you all his central pulses. He has bilateral carotid, brachial, and radial on the left. Um, here's where you can change and make them normal, weak, or absent. You can have just the carotids be light. You can have the carotids be abounding. The brachial and radials are really light. So you can really do a lot with the pulses through the software. Again, when I hit cancel, that just brings me out to the back screen. Um, and then I can go out. Here's your SPO2 settings. Again, you can make those changes. Um, you know, if you want to bring him below 90 or whatnot, um, you can do that. He does not have a, re you know, he won't react to cyanosis, but you could maybe engage that in another way with mentioning, you know, the saturations or whatnot. Now, if I go into the lungs, here's where I can change anything related to the lungs. I can go through and change the respiration rate. Again, I can toggle that up and down, make sure you hit that activate. Here's where his lung sounds are. So if I wanted to do strider and if I crank the volume up, you'll actually be able to hear that even without a stethoscope. We'll come closer to the mannequin. You can hear that sound coming through. If I go back to the lungs, lung sounds, respiration rate, this virtual CPR is gonna be probably a software update. So if you see a tile that's grayed out, that means it's to come. And once that becomes active, I will connect with your team to cut, walk you through what that feature will do for you and how that can be implemented. He does have bowel sounds. So again, you can go through and just change the parameters on the bowel sound, change the volume, hit activate, just as all the other parameters. I'm gonna just take him off uh, Strider because it's bothering me that he sounds so stressed. Here are your vocal sounds. We had gone through that earlier, but just a quick reminder, you do have the ability to have vocal sounds. Along with the vocals, you do have a headset, which has been placed over there, but it is a standard headset that plugs right into here at the bottom, and you have a push to talk. So if you plug that headset in and you push and talk through it, the vocals will come through the mannequin's microphone in his mouth. So that is something you're able to do as well. This little audible sound, uh, icon here is where all your sound settings are. So you can go through those sound settings and change them up, go as high as you want. If you don't wanna have to do them on the fly, you can set those up in advance so all the sound settings are high for the sessions.
This little hand here kind of shows you kind of what's been going on during the session. Uh, there is gonna be a log at the end and here's where you can add comments. So you could type comments in if you see something positive or something that the student needs to work on. All of this data, and I'll just type something in um, too quick with, um, you know, I'm typing terribly, defib, we'll just say. If I type that in, that, that comment is gonna stay there and it quickly at the end, I'll show you how the log works. <laughs> You can pause any session as well. If I hit pause and there's a learning a learning moment going on and you need to kind of do a timeout, you can hit pause, the session will stop. And then once I hit resume, the session will start up again. So that's, that's an overview of how to use the software. When you're done running the session, you simply hit end. When you hit end, it's gonna ask you um, if you wanna quit, if you wanna start a new session, or if you wanna view the log. So I wanna show you how the log works. If I hit view log, it's gonna automatically bring that log up. And here's where it's gonna show you the details of what happened. Now I didn't do a lot of typing, but I did a few things just so you could see how that works. If I wanna do a detailed log, it's gonna give you details. It's actually gonna show you the vital signs that were happening during the scenario at certain times. So you can have that dialogue with your students and your learners. All of this information can be saved onto a computer or onto a, like an external drive. You could display it on a screen, you could print it out. So you can kind of debrief with your learners as you see fit. When I'm done, if I wanna go through, all of your logs would be saved here. So it'll save thousands of logs. You're not limited to the amount of logs, but you could go through if I had to select a log, if there were more than one log, I could go through and change that and go in and select it and talk to that student about that, that experience. If I hit quit, it's just gonna bring me back out to the main screen. To power it down, you just wanna simply take this power button on the top, power it down. It's gonna ask you if you wanna shut down both the SIM pad and the simulator. When it says simulator, it means the link box. I recommend doing both as your power down method. And that's gonna power down simultaneously. I'm gonna loosen up my strap here that's just gonna kind of green out for a few minutes and then you're gonna see that the link box turned off. You wanna take the battery off when you're done running a session. Just disconnect it here with this prong. Take the battery out. You're gonna take the SIM pad and put it back in its case here in the battery and I think they're gonna go over here and I think you'll get more instructions on that but you wanna make sure that battery is removed because this could heat up if the battery stays on too long. I'm gonna just quickly walk you through the functionalities of the mannequin. So we did talk about it um, earlier, but he is, you can intubate him. Um, he is a fully intubatable mannequin. You can add a difficult intubation by, with this bulb, you have the ability to swell his tongue. So if I pump this up, I'm gonna show that to you quickly. If you pump this up, you'll see the tongue kind of swell up and you're gonna see that I have a hard time getting in there. To release it, you just wanna take this, turn that down and that air will come out. Um, he does have pupils that are interchangeable. His eyes don't react, but if you pull the skin kind of back, you see that the, pu the pupil kind of comes out. You can put the different pupils. There's blown and dilated pupils that you can put in here for assessment purposes. He does have crake and, tr crake and trach um, capabilities. This is his next skin that comes off. You can see his bilateral carotids there and then his trach site. You do have tape, so you can retape this after a session but you can go right through the skin and the skin kind of moves around so you're not gonna see that mark um, if you're gonna use him again for another session. He can be um, defibrillated, paste, cardioverted. These are his sites here. These are his two defibrillation prongs where these defib cables get snapped in here and they connect right into your physio. So you can get all of that output from his cardiac rhythms and, and whatnot through um, these connections as well as through his ECG connections. Um, here's where all his sounds are. You can do CPR on him. He's got heart and lung sounds. They're all anterior. He also does have bowel sounds. This is his arm for brachial radial pulses. This is where you can do the blood pressures on him. And he also has a site over here um, for a chest tube. If you can see that there, right here, you can have a chest tube placed in him as well. You're gonna see these spots on him. They look kind of like little Markers, these are IM injection sites, so you can administer medications. There is a pad here that'll host, you know, 
probably half a dozen to a dozen before you need to drain it, but it's very easily to be drained and um, dried out. This is his IV arm. I know we're not gonna get too much into this. I'm gonna send more information on the functions of the IV arm, but you can do an IV arm and it's gravity based. So you have fluid in, fluid out. You can put a tourniquet on, get a flash. You can use that for some IVs as well. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention to you is he does have an IO leg on his left leg. If you just, you know, you can rip the pants up. Here's the site for the IO again, it, same concept as the neck, you have the skin that kind of moves around. There's the IO site and then there's your drain. So you can fill up fluid here, blood or whatnot and IO right into that space. So that is an overview of his, you know, functionality um, in the SIM pad. I am gonna send more details and more um, wording on this so you can have it as a reference and hopefully you'll have a great experience using him and all of his features. Thank you.